So I heard you want to get started doing digital art in 2023. Awesome. It's never been easier or more affordable to get started, but with so many choices out there for software and hardware, it can be overwhelming. In this video, we're going to go over what is essential and what is not, some good starter options, and what we'll do to most for you when starting out on your digital art journey. To make this guide as simple to follow as possible, I'm going to make a few assumptions. First, that you might not have done any art before now, or you have spent most of your time doing traditional art and you're just getting started in digital. In either case, we're going to focus on what you actually need and avoid spending money on things you don't. Let's go ahead and get started. Section 1. What you absolutely need to get. The only things you need to have to do digital art is some kind of computer. That could be a laptop, desktop, smartphone, tablet, whatever will do. And some kind of drawing application. And there are many of those to choose from, from free to very expensive. You ask 100 people what their favorite drawing application is or what the best one is, and you'll get 100 different answers. Just like with learning any new skill, I'd recommend trying the free options first. While paid programs will be more polished in some ways, they won't make you better at art on their own, and the money is better used elsewhere. As for what I'd recommend to a beginner specifically, I would say it depends on what you already have. If you only have a smartphone, you can do a lot with the application Ibis Paint. This app is ad-supported with a community gallery feature. While you can use a finger to draw on paint, getting a simple stylus to draw with will make this way easier to use, even if it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. If you have a laptop or desktop, you can download Krita, a fully featured application that is extremely versatile with a community rich in resources. While there are other applications that are more specialized like Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, Procreate for the iPad, and so on, I'd personally recommend saving your money for the time being and put it towards the next part of the starter kit, a pen tablet. Getting one of these with a good feature set will do more for your ability to do digital art than about anything else. That being said, don't go too crazy as the benefit gained per dollar drops off pretty quickly. I'd personally recommend this XP Pen 10x6 tablet. It takes some time to get used to not looking at your hand while drawing, but it is nearly as good as any Wacom tablet that costs hundreds of dollars more while only costing $50. The medium size is also good because unlike the cheapest of possible tablets, this provides ample space to draw using your entire arm comfortably. One thing to keep in mind is that if you only have an Android or iOS device, the pen tablet may not be fully compatible. In that case, I'd recommend getting a stylus to use with it while saving for a compatible computer. Section 2. What you absolutely do not need. Now that we have gone over the essential buys, let's go over what seriously is not needed. First and foremost, top of the line electronics. You don't need a high-spec, newly-released computer or iPad to do digital art. There are certainly nice to have in terms of having larger canvases with lots of layers, but to learn and get started, pretty much anything will do. You will get infinitely more out of a $200 computer and $1,000 in education than you will get out of a $1,200 MacBook Pro. I would also avoid the temptation to buy an expensive pen display or iPad Pro with pencil when first starting. The main reason for this is while it is a more natural experience going from drawing on paper to drawing on a screen, it will still entirely depend on the skills you already have. If you're a new artist, you won't be able to draw with a ton of skill either way. Though if you're an experienced traditional artist, the iPad route is, in my opinion, the best digital sketchbook you can get. But I'd still stress this is more of a luxury than a must-have. Somewhat related, when you're starting out, you don't need the most expensive versions of software either. For example, it's pretty common to find the previous year's version of Coral Painter for $30 when the most recent version can be over $150. A beginner simply wouldn't benefit from the slight quality of life features year over year for any application. And one last thing, brush packs. There are some really cool brushes out there, obviously, but don't get them just for the sake of using them. A simple round brush will be good enough for 99% of digital art when used properly. And the most important thing here is to be more concerned with how well you can use the brush as an extension of yourself, not the specific aesthetic of the brush or whatever it's trying to emulate. It's also very easy to let brushes become more of a crutch than a time saver. If you use them to avoid drawing things you have difficulty with, plants and chains being common examples. Section 3. What to expect. As a beginner to digital art, it can be easy to fall into the trap of comparing yourself to other artists who may or may not be younger than you, who have years more experience in the medium. Like anything else, this requires lots of practice, and while we talk about talent as if it were some innate thing you have or you don't, 
the reality is, is that most people, even those who end up as seasoned professionals, started from nothing and slowly got better over time with consistent work. Working with a pen and tablet can come with quite a learning curve, especially in terms of eye-hand coordination, but with time, that eases significantly. The first step to being great at something is to be pretty bad at it, so don't be too hard on yourself. Section 4. Where to invest over time. Once you have a drawing app like Krita and a basic pen tablet, you might want to think about what will do the most for you over time to improve your art making experience. This is of course just my opinion, but I do feel confident about the ordering. First, education. If you want to get better at digital art, buy into some of the amazing classes both in person and on the internet in places like Gumroad, Patreon, and so on. Learn from your peers and mentors. A second monitor can also be handy. This is just a good thing for productivity in general. Being able to have your reference or tutorial on a second screen while working on the main one is incredibly handy. Paint art software. I personally like Clip Studio Paint, but there's a ton of options like Photoshop, Rebel, Painter, Art Rage, and so on. Just be mindful not to buy the professional versions that have features you don't really need. Pretty much every art app will have some trial version and I would strongly recommend you try as many as possible before committing to purchase anything. And maybe some kind of scanner. Being able to bring in hand sketches and traditional art in an accurate way is very useful for making digital art. Though not as essential as it used to be with how smartphones have evolved to be able to scan fairly effectively. Same goes for a nicer camera of some sort for taking reference pictures or documenting your art. But chances are your phone is more than good enough. Closing thoughts. One thing I wanted to make absolutely clear in all this is that the tools for making digital art are extremely accessible now. You don't really need top of the line hardware or to be using the most popular or well-known software to get into the weeds of creating things. And often what you already have is more than enough. If you have any specific questions about what to use or if something's useful, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to answer. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this in the future. I have a bunch of other videos like this floating around like this one, and I hope I see you in the next one. Laters!